In this video, we're going to discuss SP2 and SP orbital hybridizations. So in the previous video, we introduced orbital hybridization and the general scheme and talked about SP3 hybridization. Now in that video, I mentioned that that type of hybridization only works for tetrahedral molecules that need to form those bonds with four atoms at 109.5 degree angles. It's very specific. So there are other hybridization schemes to account for other molecular geometries. And so we're gonna look at two other hybridization schemes here, SP2 and SP. So first let's look at this molecule. So this is ethene which has the molecular formula C2H4. And this is its Lewis structure and its three-dimensional Vesper representation. So, uh, so what you have is a carbon-carbon double bond at the middle of the framework, and these carbon-hydrogen bonds are separated by 120 degrees. So basically at each point, you have a local trigonal planar geometry at each of these central carbon centers, right? So kind of using Vesper theory for these cases where there's not one single central atom. So since the SP3 hybridization scheme gives us four identical orbitals to use in bonds, and this, um, this, this, uh, carb these carbon atoms in ethene are only bonding to three atoms, right? We know that the hybridization has to be different. There's only three bonds at each carbon atom, and they're separated by 120 degree angles. So those sp3 orbitals that we've already established would not work in this case. And so that must mean that these carbons are employing a different hybridization scheme. So let's look at this. So again, I'm going to look at this from the standpoint of how do these orbitals change compared to the free atom versus when they're actually involved in a molecule. So again, here we have the uh, atomic orbitals for free carbon atom, right? The atomic valence orbitals for free carbon atom. Uh, when it is involved in a molecule, we're gonna get some hybridization, right? So hybridization is going to occur, but ethene is going to imply, or is going to apply a very different hybridization scheme. What's gonna happen is since it only needs to form three bonds, it's only gonna need three orbitals. So it's gonna use one of the, the 2s and two of the 2p orbitals. So it's gonna use the 2s and only two of the 2p orbitals, right? So you're gonna end up with three hybrid orbitals and you're gonna have one unhybridized 2p orbital that's gonna remain there, right? So this is a 2p orbital that remains unhybridized and these are going to be our sp2 hybridized orbitals. It's called sp2 because you're using one s orbital and two p orbitals, right? So this hybridization is a, is a result of a mixing of two p orbitals and one s orbital, thus sp2. Now I point out this unhybridized two p orbital specifically, right? So we're going to come back to this, right? Um, and, and talk about this unhybridized sp or this unhybridized two p orbital. But let's look at our um, ethene molecule from a, a orbital hybridization standpoint, right? So we got our carbon atom uh, that's on this side. And then we're gonna have three sp2 hybrid orbitals that are gonna be separated at 120 degree angles. Right, so trying to draw it to scale here, but these are all sp2, sp2. sp2 and so at least for um for these guys on the left side right these are going to be interacting with hydrogen 1s orbitals right so we got hydrogen 1s orbitals here that are in direct uh contact with these sp2 hybrid orbitals from the carbon center now the other carbon center is going to also employ this same sp2 hybridization scheme, right? So I'm gonna draw out some hybrid orbitals here as well, right? This guy's sp2, again, separated at 120 degrees. Again, we're gonna have interaction here with hydrogen atoms, hydrogen 1s,
right? So this is um, this this is the hybridization scheme that each of these carbons is going to employ. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that this diagram is unfinished; it's not done yet. Why is that? Well, if we look at the structure for ethene, right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six bonds, right? Overlap between two orbitals is only going to account for one bond. So we've accounted for one, two, three, four, five bonds here. So there's one bond that we have not accounted for yet. Now, obviously, these single bonds for carbon and hydrogen are all well accounted for by these single bonds or these single interactions between hydrogen 1s and carbon sp2 right that gives us uh those single bonds but we have a double bond here between the carbon between the two carbon atoms and this scheme here gives us a way to accurately describe the double bond between these carbons and it's going to involve this unhybridized 2p orbital so let's look at this. Let me use a different color for the 2p orbitals, right? So these each of these carbon atoms is going to have an unhybridized 2p orbital at its center, right? So I'm going to draw the little dumbbell orbital at the center of each carbon, right? So what's going to happen is these unhybridized 2p orbitals are going to have a favorable electrostatic interaction. Right. So there's going to be a favorable interaction between these two P orbitals. That's going to cause the double bond. So one of the double bonds, one of the bonds in a double bond is caused by direct overlap between the SP2 orbitals. But then the other bond is caused by this parallel interaction between these unhybridized 2p orbitals right so this gives us two different distinct types of interactions right we have these types of direct head-on overlap like we have between the sp2 and the 1s and these two sp2 orbitals those are what we call sigma bonds right so sigma bonds so the the greek letter sigma sigma bonds are results of direct overlap, right? This direct head-on overlap between different orbitals, right? Whether it's this sp2 and 1s or these two sp2 orbitals, those are sigma interactions. This type of parallel interaction between uh, two uh, between two orbitals, usually two unhybridized atomic orbitals, that is called a pi interaction. Right. So these are pi bonds and pi bonds are a result of these parallel interactions. So these parallel kind of electrostatic interactions between unhybridized uh, atomic orbitals is how we get pi bonds. Right. So you have sigma bonds, direct overlap, pi bonds, parallel interactions between unhybridized orbitals. And so this hybridization gives us a way to describe double bonds very, very um, exactly, right? Um, so we have, a, so we know that one of the bonds is a sigma bond between sp2 orbitals, and the other bond is a pi interaction between the unhybridized 2p orbitals. Okay, so that's sp2 hybridization. So now let's talk about sp hybridization. As an example of sp, we'll look at ethine, which is C2H2. And as far as naming these guys, uh, you don't have to know this yet. We'll talk about this at the very end of the course when we talk about uh, organic molecules and how to name these guys. But for now, just know that ethine is C2H2. And it has the following structure. Most prominently, this triple bond between the two carbons in the center, right? So you got a triple bond between these two carbons and these bonds are separated by a 180 degree angle straight line, right? So what we have at each center is two bonds that need to be formed, right? So we got two bonds, one to the hydrogen, one to the carbon. So we only need two hybrid orbitals. So when we hybridize, right, when the, uh, when the carbon hybridizes, right, it's going to use one of these S or, well, the one S orbital and only one of these 2p orbitals. So you're going to end up with two hybrid orbitals and you're going to have two 
unhybridized 2p orbitals, right? These 2p orbitals unhybridized, these are going to be hybrid orbitals of sp type, right? And that's because you're using one s orbital and one p orbital. So it's called sp hybridization. So what is this going to look like? So I'm going to draw the sigma uh, bonding framework and the pi bonding framework separately. So first, let's do the sigma bonding framework. So for the sigma bonds, right, for the sigma bonds, let's say we got our carbon here, right? And we know we're going to have two sp hybrid orbitals. Right, so this guy's sp, this guy's sp, and again, we're going to have two sp hybrid orbitals on this carbon as well. Right, this guy's sp, this guy's sp, right, and then we have the two hydrogen atoms that are bonded to both carbons, right, and they're using their 1s orbitals, right, so this guy's 1s. This guy is 1s. Okay, so those are the sigma bonds, but obviously we haven't accounted for all the bonds. We've accounted for one, two, three bonds, right? We still got two more that we have to account for here to get all five bonds that are present in this molecule. So now let's do the pi bonding framework. So the pi bonds, if you're thinking about this in analogy to the previous example that we did, right? Um, these pi interact, these, the double and the triple bond are going to be pi interactions between these unhybridized 2p orbitals, right? So let's say we have one 2p orbital that's along this axis, and then we have another one that's like coming in and out of the board, right? Uh, and let me make sure that they're different colors. So let me use yellow for this one, right? So these are two different 2p orbitals. Right, so let me uh, draw our other carbon atom. And then we'll have 2PY and 2PZ. Right, so what we get here is parallel interactions between these unhybridized 2P orbitals, right? So these two are going to interact favorably and have a pi interaction. And then these guys are going to interact favorably and have their own pi interaction, right? So this is one 2p orbital. I'll just call these 2py. And then the, um, the yellow ones I'll call 2pz, right? So you end up with two unhybridized 2p orbitals that have favorable pi interactions to form the double and triple bond in Fi, right? Okay, so these are by far the most common hybridization schemes that you will see throughout chemistry. Definitely when you're in organic chemistry, you're gonna to wanna to be very um, aware of these three hybridization schemes, SP3, SP2, and SP, right? So if I were to ask you, what's the hybridization at this carbon in ethyne, you would say this is an SP hybridized carbon, right? And then if we go back to our original example here with ethene, and I ask you the same question, what's the hybridization at this carbon atom? You would say this carbon atom is SP2 hybridized, right? So by forming these three bonds, 120 degree angles, it's employing SP2 hybridization, right? Okay, so now we've covered three hybridization schemes. Um, in the next video, we're going to cover a hybridiza uh, two hybridization schemes that actually account for the exceptions to the octet rule. So it's gonna kind of employ some of the first uh, things we learned in the first unit about the uh, octet rule exceptions and how this orbital hybridization scheme actually allows uh, these exceptions to the octet rule.